you take us away. So oh, I get to start. Cool. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alan Foster. I'm the president of Cantara at the moment and have been for a few years now. And this is the second in our series of these workshops that we've had this year. So we have the first one, September 10th. Uh, September 11th. A very important day. day. We had September 11th in Seattle, um, where we went through this. We've got this one today, and then we've got the next one in December 11th, 13th. 13th um, Going to be in Singapore. So really, it's the world tour that we've got around here, and the 12th. Okay. <laughs> and it's been it's been a really interesting sort of voyage, teaming up with Coventry Call in terms of looking at the consumer identity space. This is one that Kentara is quite heavily involved in and very heavily invested in. And so during the day, I'm going to hand over the column in a second and, and sort of go through things, but during the day, the purpose that we're here is so that we can try and share with you guys what we're doing um, and, and engage in discussion. And so, you know, we've got some panel discussions up here, we've got various people who are going to be giving um, uh, some presentations ample time to ask questions, to talk about things, um, that engaging conversation and, and having the conversation with us in here in the room is really why we are here. So I encourage that um, as we go through the, the, the sort of event and go through the day with the presentations. So yeah, at the moment, I'll probably be back up later on, but at the moment, welcome, thank you all for coming, and John. <laughs> John Culver with Cooper Your Coal, and uh, welcome to the event. Uh, as you know, tomorrow we'll start our part of the event, Consumer Identity World, where we'll be focused on all aspects of consumer identity, particularly here, um, GDPR, and there'll probably be some mentions of things like PSD2 as well. And like Alan said, um, we're very pleased to have you. We did start this off back in September in Seattle. Had a great turnout, thought it was a really good event, and glad that Kintara is partnering with us on these. Uh, it's a good opportunity to get the Kintara message out about the work that they're doing, because it is uh, quite important, especially with things around GDPR. Uh, and then we'll have the event here this week, and uh, again in Singapore in a couple of weeks as well. So uh, I'm glad if anyone would like to join us on, on the rest of the tour. And for now, I will Turn it back over to Colin. Right, thank you, John. Thank you, Alan. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to have you here in Paris. And uh, we're just, what we're going to do is really just walk through. I was trying to give you a sort of a sense of what the agenda uh, is, uh, is playing out like. If you want to have a quick look at what the, the afternoon is, uh, that's, we'll, we'll get to it in due course. But I just want to, uh, first of all, of course, add my welcome to everyone else as I'm the Executive Director of Kantara, and many of you know me, uh, but if you don't, here I am, <laughs> it's uh, lovely to meet you, uh, even, if, uh, even if just virtually at the moment. But by the end of the day, I hope we, we know each other pretty well. What we're going to do here is uh, we've got an interesting sort of mix of, of folks because uh, Kantara is a global organisation that has quite a, a large presence in mainland Europe and we're, going, we're, we're presenting with some of our workshop, uh, our working group chairs, we're going to uh, present some of their work uh, in the different working groups. So you're going to have a chance to meet and interact uh, with those working group chairs. Basically the, the, the day has a kind of cadence to it. Uh, in the sense that we're going to do some sort of stand-ups and short, uh, short presentations, followed by a panel of some of those people and uh, and potentially some of you <coughs> as well, out of the, out of the audience, if, if that's what you, if you feel that you can contribute along the way. So um, that's the kind of idea. We're going to um, uh, basically start with um, a, an overview of Kantara because it, just to give me a sense of. Um, how many have not heard of Kantara at all? Okay, so that's about five or six of you. Okay, uh, the rest know it, so if I you put your hand up if you know it reasonably. <coughs> about a few, okay. Know it well? 
<laughs> okay, right. So it's roughly a third, a third, a third. Okay. Uh, that gives me uh, a, a kind of sense. I think we're probably pitched, pitched uh, the day about right there. Because I'm going to start with sort of kind of giving you a walkthrough about what Antara is. Uh, the, the principles it holds, uh, a, a brief overview of some of the work. Uh, and then we're going to sort of kind of get into uh, more detail uh, because you're going to have your uh, working group chairs uh, and, uh, and sponsor Alan with his, this is with his, uh, um, not with his <coughs> Gantara president's hat on for a moment, but uh, forger of sponsor hat on, uh, followed by the, uh, by the working group <coughs> chairs. And Kornay Van Rouge has a, a special announcement which we've uh, reserved for today. Uh, we're going to finish with coffee in around uh, an hour or 20, something like that. Uh, and then we're going to get into a little more detail there around the, um, some specifics that are actually coming from some of those working group chairs. It's almost a sort of a pivot to relating some of Kantara's working group, uh, working group work uh, into some of the things going on uh, in the EU. And we're going to finish then with uh, a sort of a broad facing panel and we're proposing to finish, uh, get into lunch at around 12.45, something like that. Uh, then we're going to move into the afternoon session. You'll see that we're going to open that up with uh, Joni Brennan, who's in the audience now, from DIAC, and Katrina Dow, who's not yet in the audience, but she's got other, other uh, meetings this morning in Paris. Uh, she's joining us in the afternoon from Miko, uh, and they're going to give us a sort of a, a, a um, different jurisdiction, different continental view of things. Of, of, that's why we call it postcards from abroad. A uh, few things uh, that are going on elsewhere in the world, and we're going to have them up on a panel. That panel two there um, is really all about um, pulling together uh, some of those ideas um, with a sort of a kind of a you know, what's missing, what, what, need, what gaps need to be filled uh, in terms of the, the consumer identity access management offering as, it, as it's uh, merging, verging into today. So we're going to finish then around uh, 3 o'clock for coffee. Uh, then the afternoon is really going to be, after the later afternoon session, is more specifically around vendor solutions. So uh, these are members of Kantara, uh, who you know both um, volunteer their time and effort to Kantara, but also of course are running businesses. Uh, their businesses are, are, are building and thriving on the, but as they consume Kantara's artifacts. So they're going to talk to you a little bit about what they're doing uh, in some of that space. Again, uh, at around 4:15, we're going to have those folks uh, on a panel. We might add again to we'll see how the room is shaping up at that point, we might add uh, other folks to the panel. Uh, in the, towards the end of the day, we're going to have almost like a group session about uh, what more can Kantara do uh, in, the, in the mainland EU area. What can we achieve in terms of uh, pieces of different work uh, that um, might have come from the gap filling exercise that we could potentially get into because we have you know, the ability, the working group structure, uh, the publishing structure and so on to do that. So we wanted to sort of kind of um, get your ideas uh, in a sort of collective and collaborative way about uh, what new pieces of work need to be done, who could potentially do them, uh, who will pay for the work to be done. Uh, and we're finishing around about 5.30, quarter to 6, when we're going to be moving across uh, to the Cafe Lockwood, uh, courtesy of Forge Rock, uh, who's putting on some drinks and some nibbles there to, uh, to end the day with in a nice congenial fashion. So I'm just going to, any questions first of all about the agenda before I move on? Clear as mud? Now, of course it sounds very organised and now you're going to find out that we really are making it up as we go along. <laughs> Um, actually, now, and, and this is the very first, uh, the first sense of that, because I just, uh, because I just see, thanks, 
because I just see the next thing is uh, that um, we, I should have uh, brought a sign-in sheet, which I do have. Uh, so I'm going to take this and uh, start with the front. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is common to only pen. Just make sure it comes out. I'll do another one, actually. So this is the app thing I say can be used right. against you. Everything you say. Okay, so you are having a sign-in sheet coming around now. This is, this is just in time organization, right? Uh, and this, the sign-in sheet basically says, um, well, the, the, these are our, this is our privacy policy and this is our, um, our intellectual property policy. We give you links for that. But fundamentally what it says, the way that Kantara runs it has four uh, intellectual property policies and uh, a working group typically chooses one of those four uh, to operate its work under. What happens is when you join a, work, uh, join a working group, whether you're a member or a non-member participant, you're signing a thing called a group participation agreement. And the group participation agreement basically says um, that anything that I'm contributing, uh, I'm, I'm effectively, uh, you know, I, it, it's free of other IPR. It's my, it's my contribution and I'm contributing it to you. Otherwise, I'm going to say, no, it's not my IPR, and it belongs to this other entity or person. Uh, and effectively, we're able to use that, uh, that contribution in the work. Now, of course, what we do is we do a double check on that when, uh, when we come to publish something. That's why we do a public review and um, the chance for folks to lodge any IP claims uh, in any of the work that they see. But the, the issue that we've got when we have these kinds of um, group discussions here is you've got a whole bunch of folks that haven't signed a group participation agreement <laughs> uh, who may contribute from the floor and we would love to do that. But we want to be really, uh, we want to have it, make it really clear in your mind that as you do that, right, unless you tell us, no, this is not my IPR, please do not use it, or this is my IPR and we don't want you to use it in any way, shape or form, we won't write anything down, uh, then we basically need to know that. Otherwise, we're going to make the assumption that if you are shouting it out from the audience, that you're expecting it to be noted, consumed, and otherwise, you know, taken into the work. Okay? So, uh, that's the way that we're going to, uh, but that's the, basically the way that we run these, uh, these meetings. Um, and uh, we, we try to run them almost like an extension, if you like, as a, a, an extension of a, of a typical working group. So, moving along then, I just want to give a little bit of a, a, a context here, because as we get into, you know, the whys and wherefores of Kantara, we really want to start with that sort of scene setting. You know, what's, what's the domain? Well, the domain that we're in, of course, is digital identity and personal data and the transformation of that. We're in this industry. Uh, we're, we're either uh, consumers or, or suppliers to this, uh, to this industry of consumer identity management uh, and personal data. We could call it different things. We could, uh, we could describe it in slightly different ways. But fundamentally, that's what it is. You know, and it's... In, in, uh, in many domains, in, in almost every domain really, you have to have this sort of kind of collect, collective action, this, uh, this sense of collaboration, uh, moving, moving the dial, moving things forward. Um, it's, it's an interesting thing I find actually, uh, and, and it's um, often folks say, well, what can I get? This is particularly companies actually rather than individuals. Companies will say, what do I get out of Kantara? What do I get? And it's, it's a two-way thing. It's, and what are you going to contribute for what you get out? Because it actually is a two-way, uh, it's a two-way street there. This is, you know, this is, we are, you know, a, a, a fairly cash-strapped non-profit. You know, we're not a global corporation. You don't get everything out. It's not a one-way, one-way traffic. It's, it's a, it's a two-way street where you contribute as much as you put in. So for Kantara itself, of course, um, 
What does uh, what does what does this mean? Of course, many of you, many of you have uh, you may have seen the uh, the Kantara logo, and of course, Joni was in the audience was here when this was uh, uh, this was produced in two thousand and nine. And it, you can see there that it's a little stylized. What, what do you think those? That little, it's a. It could be a rainbow. Does anyone sort of sense what those? Uh, what those little? If perhaps if I bring it back to much a much bigger one, hang on a sec. Much bigger on the left hand side. So you could call it various things, but that little stylized sort of half loop thing is actually uh, intended to mean bridge. Because Kantara is in Swahili, African languages, Arabic, Arabic down through Central Africa, Swahili means bridge, wooden bridge. And in fact, this name was for Kantara was um, was given to us, uh, contributed to us by Nat Sakamura of uh, NRI, also chairman of the Open ID Foundation. So it was Nat's name, of course. Nat being Japanese. His, his parents were uh, diplomats and he spent uh, most of his childhood uh, in Africa uh, and he learned to speak quite a lot of the language. So that's how uh, the name Kantara came to be, Wooden Bridge. Everything we do is done in a set of, uh, in, in a process of collaboration and doing things together. So what are the things that we do? And, and one of my Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm apt to say quite often, others talk, we do. Because we're in a, we're in a, um, a space where there's any number of folks that tweet and blog and white paper and they survey and they, they, uh, they comment and they observe, but they run conferences but what do they actually produce? And the point that Kantara, it's always been to produce something tangible. And you'll see that coming through the work groups and you'll see it coming through uh, the work that it does. That's why it actually has an operational side uh, to it as well. Founded in 2009 uh, in Delaware and very recently uh, also uh, founded in uh, Estonia. And it's not a um, it's not a wholly owned the Estonian uh, operation is not a wholly owned subsidiary of the U.S. It's a completely separate operation and a separate organisation that was deliberately done. Initially, of course, when um, when I uh, I took this role, I was uh, offered this role from Joni as she was departed departing to the Great White North. Um, the uh, and uh, I was. Um, I was, uh, you know, as, as a New Zealander, um, but having a, a British passport and, you know, age and stage in life, getting a, a US work visa wasn't going to be the easiest thing in the world. So the board decided, uh, well, that's okay, Colin, just use your, your British passport and, uh, and go to England and set up, um, you know, Kantara Europe. We've always been wanting to do it. We'll set it up in the UK. Uh, so that was fine. And then, of course, we heard about this, this uh, referendum coming up for Brexit, and we thought, well, you know, it's never going to happen, but, you know, maybe we'll just wait. Uh, so we decided to uh, wait till June, of course, we know what the result was there. And it was then, of course, at that stage, we then had uh, the US election starting to bubble. We said, well, you know, it's a foregone conclusion, isn't it? But let's just wait and see uh, how, that, how that plays out. Uh, so by the end of that, uh, the board were pretty determined that we weren't going to actually have any... Uh, um, a hard connection between Kantara US and Kantara Europe. Very specifically, if you remember some of the election rhetoric from the Republicans um, around how data was going to be uh, uh, surveyed, surveilled, if you like, um, we wanted to have the option of actually bringing the complete membership database, the US, and putting it into the Frankfurt service so that we would actually have it completely out of the sight of uh, the US government. So that was the reason for having the separate, uh, uh, the separate organisation in, in um, Estonia. Uh, strong ethics and societal purpose, something that you'll see uh, very much in what we do. Um, and basically we have that uh, notion of uh, wanting to give 
um, uh, give users back control of their data. And you'll actually see that as a sort of a, a fundamental underpinning all the way through Kantara's work. It doesn't make us popular necessarily with some folks uh, that we want to do that. Um, it makes us poorer as a result. Uh, but we're very strongly principled about uh, giving the power back, equalizing, if you like, equating the power between uh, the customer and uh, the service provider, and, and particularly around the power of what they can do with their data. The business model uh, is, well, uh, I, we already talked about the low barriers to participation just before I move on to that, and that was because you can actually uh, it's not a pay-to-play organisation. It's a very, diff very, very difficult business model to run. I might add. I don't know how Jody did it. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, uh, but it is a difficult business model to run because most are run on a pay-to-play. In other words, you can't join. You can't, if you don't join, you don't get anything. Uh, so because Cantara has this principle of low barriers to participation, then actually uh, a lot of its stuff is available for free. And you can uh, join and uh, and uh, contribute into a into a uh, working group without without paying any money at all. There's a limit to what you can do when it comes to decision making, for sure. But it's possible to do that. But it is one of those things that uh, you know the more you invest, the more you get out of it. Uh, and that's why you have, of course, the working group chairs uh, and representing those organisations in the room today, because this is a way in which we can pay back their uh, contribution to us. The membership, uh, the business model is uh, effectively those three things. We, we make our money, uh, such paltry as it is, from uh, membership dues, uh, from running the trust framework. Uh, that's the process in which we have uh, our accredited assessors um, assess uh, some assessment, some requirements, uh, service assessment criteria, we typically call them, uh, out of a standard, and they approve service providers uh, to be able to, uh, to demonstrate conformance and compliance with that standard or set of criteria and are trust marked for it. So we have a, a business around that with our, our major customer, the uh, GSA, the General Services Administration in the USA. Uh, and we also have the working groups as, a, um, as uh, effectively the, 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 um, the thought bubble, the innovation uh, part of the side of the house. So basically it's bringing in an idea, building it through towards a report, building it through towards a re recommendation or a specification, sometimes some of which move to the, to the trust framework, the trust services side of the house. Uh, to be monetized into uh, in a, in a, a program of conformity assessment. So we have these sort of kind of, you'll actually see this going through the, the membership side, but then particularly something starting off life in a working group and then moving across uh, into the uh, trust services side. Our mission is there the, uh, on the screen, the Global Consortium for Improving Trustworthy Use of Identity and Personal Data through Innovation, Standardization and Good Practice. Pretty straightforward, easy to think, hard to do. Uh, but uh, folks in the room are spending uh, great parts of uh, every day helping us uh, make that uh, make that so. Our value proposition to uh, to folks, whether they are uh, government members, uh, corporates, uh, individuals, is fundamentally, uh, particularly for the corporates, is brand association with the things that we do. Uh, and you'll start to, and this is a, an example as you're going to see a different series of logos coming up on this, the screen. And these, this is a way in which member organisations who are going to speak to you today are able to uh, associate their brand with uh, things that Kantara is doing. And that is, the other thing, of course, is, is it has, because it's got the low barriers to, to participation, we actually get a whole bunch of, of leading, leading edge thought thinkers. Uh, into Kantara, uh, where you typically wouldn't have them, you wouldn't find these people in a corporate environment. But something that, you know, a lot of that bleeding edge thinking 
doesn't come out of the corporate space. It actually comes from individuals <coughs> and garages and, and, uh, and round coffee machines and so on. Um, and it's a way of trying to find a, a venue where, where corporations can find those people and tap their knowledge. Uh, and that's, that's certainly what we try and do. Uh, some folks join us because of our formal liaison with uh, ISO EC27 Working Group 5 and we, uh, we actively contribute into that uh, and contribute some of our work that way as well. We do have one with ITUT and other folks, uh, but it's certainly the ISO uh, Working Group 5 uh, one that we're spending most time on. And so for those who aren't able to get to their, nation, the, their ISO national body, uh, you know, they, they're shut out for some reason um, or just simply find the process too difficult. Uh, we find that they tend to come to Kantara and use uh, our relationship with them so they can see the documents, the draft documents coming down from ISO uh, and be able to uh, have first sight of them and contribute to them. So, and we have this, you know, this mix of thought leaders, individuals and organisations, as I've said. A uh, quick snapshot, it's not all our members, but it's a quick snapshot of, uh, of what's there and you'll sort of kind of see a real mix of, of small and large, uh, of identity folks, uh, of um, personal data folks, uh, some of whom you're going, to, you're going to hear from today. So these are probably, I, I've, I've chosen three, but we've got a lot of other uh, work as well that you're going to see on the next slide. But these are the things that we're best known for. Uh, um, certainly in the standards and specification space is UMA. Uh, often UMA is, uh, is mentioned, um, as it is in the UK often, without uh, any attribution to Kantara. Uh, but that's where the, the standard, that's where the standard lives, that's where the work is done. Uh, and um, it's, it's basically the only game in town when it comes to uh, access, user-managed access control. You, you, in Europe we tend to think of Exactmal doing that, but Exactmal is a corporate, centralised, uh, very um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a, an industrial kind of way um, of uh, managing access which is not really user driven at all uh, and UMA is really the only game in town to be able to do user managed delegated access and that's, uh, and that's built off OAuth um, and of course the, one of the things if you know OAuth quite well, it's, it's, a, it's a two party, two party sharing construct. Uh, and basically we've created, we've extended OAuth to make it multi-party. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about UMA and I think uh, we might be, uh, we're not going to be joined by Eve Mailer who's been uh, championing uh, UMA uh, and the work as the chair of the, uh, of the UMA working group. We're not going to be blessed with her today but we are going to be blessed with Justin Richer. Uh, who's uh, going to be, who has done a lot of work uh, for UMA, done a lot of work for Kantara generally actually with the, um, with the consent receipt uh, machine readable work as well. The consent receipt specification getting a lot of traction uh, and a lot of awareness in, in Europe because of course it was, it wasn't really, it's not fair to say that it was purpose built for GDPR Mark was it because it was really it was it's it's designed as a global uh, as a global specification, but it has particular application to the consent requirements in GDPR as a as a um, underpinning standard. So a lot of these things, of course, you know, consent receipt is a classic case where um, we're having a strong interchange with ISO SC twenty seven working group five. Uh, where ISO 29184, uh, I think going to see it to the first committee draft, uh, is uh, privacy notices and consent. Uh, so you can understand how, how close these two pieces of work are and the uh, editor for that is none other than Matt Sakamura from NRI and Kantara board member. Uh, the third and uh, last but certainly not least is Kantara's uh, Trust Framework Operations. 
I put in the two logos, uh, the two trust marks there for a creator of the decessors, one of whom is going to speak to you today, Nixu. Uh, is, uh, Nixu is an accredited assessor for Kantara in Europe. Uh, and Kantara, the approved logo, is the, um, is the trust mark that uh, service providers get once they're assessed against the particular uh, set of criteria. But there are more, and you're going to hear a little bit uh, about some of these uh, as we go on during the day. Because we have representatives of some of the working groups in the room. Uh, we certainly have eGov, we have IRN, we don't have a uh, federated interop working group um, uh, rep to talk on the, uh, the implementation profile that we're doing with the higher ed space. Uh, we don't have anyone on smart um, on blockchain smart contracts. I'm I, I can't attribute at least in public uh, where this uh, where that quote came from, um, but it was uh, someone very very well known in the USA in the federal space, uh, and uh, it it, was, it makes interesting reading actually uh, the blockchain smart contracts report. And uh, we've actually, it's, it's uh, for several months, it, it topped our list of downloads because we're counting the number of people that download our, our specifications and, uh, and reports. So um, I'm going to take you through a, a number of lenses here uh, as we do this um, and some ways in which you can look at Kantara stuff. One is that it's sort of kind of a nurture, develop, operate. There's a sort of kind of cadence of, of bringing some work in, whether it's something that we've uh, brought in ourselves or it's something uh, that has been uh, sponsored in, and, and an organisation is using uh, the Kantara um, <coughs> development platform to take an idea through to uh, a report or a specification, whatever it might be. Uh, and out of that, we build those standards and requirements uh, which in turn we turn into assessment criteria to operate uh, a trust framework around. So, you know, as I was saying to a director quite recently, trust frameworks are fundamentally, um, they have a, a commonality and when you, uh, and the, the, the discussion was, oh, but, you know, we're looking at one that's got, a, that's on a different subject and a different scope. And I responded to him saying that trust frameworks are like cakes. You can have chocolate ones and banana ones, and you can have some with icing, and you can have some with a little bit fund. They have to have some fundamental uh, um, pieces of the recipe, like baking soda. Um, and, and basically, if you have those fundamental things, they are a trust framework, and you, you modify how you, uh, um, how you operate them and how you manage them, depending on what those different, um, those different toppings uh, or flavours might be. But fundamentally they are the same thing. So it doesn't matter really whether you're doing an identity trust framework or a personal data trust framework. They have to have some, some, uh, some evidential uh, key components uh, that you actually apply to it. So uh, we have certainly done that in the identity space for the US uh, and we hope to do more of that in Europe. One of the interesting things of course is that um, you know the, the uh, certification that we have to, uh, the authorization we have to operate trust framework for the GSA different from the one that um, we would have to have if we were going to operate it for uh, Government UK Verified, which is different again from the one that we would have to have if we were going to operate it for EIDAS, which is different again from the one that we would have to have if we were operating it for the uh, uh, Digital Transformation Agency in Australia. So one of the hard things for a non-profit in this sort of kind of space is there are just so many different uh, um, uh, sets of criteria and hoops to jump through that it does make it kind of frustrating at times uh, to, uh, to be able to offer fundamentally the same thing in very slightly different flavours, all costing you more money. Um, another way of looking at it is sort of kind of in this gear type scenario, um, that it's basically, um, effectively we have this, this cadence of, uh, of um, working together 
building membership and, and liaisons and then applying governance structure over the top to the work. So yeah, not unlike OAX, um, OAX has, I'd like to see Susan, and the, the, uh, she may disagree with him in the audience here. Um, uh, OAX uh, operates its white papers, its registry, uh, the Economics of Identity Conference last week, which was very good, I hear. Um, but there's a difference perhaps with, uh, um, in terms of operating a service, and that's really what I wanted to sort of try and get to there. Another way of looking at it is, is the sort of kind of two-sided platform. It looks a little bit like the Open ID Foundation here, uh, because you know, Open ID has, uh, you know, you can build various. There are various working groups um, that take the Open ID protocol and and apply it in different ways. And it does have, you know, a self a self attesting uh, platform for uh, Open ID. Um, uh, interoperability and connection. So, you know, from that perspective, it, it's got some elements of the same thing, which is fine if you've got the Open ID protocol. But if you haven't got, the, if, if you've got, if you arrive and say, I want to do something with another protocol or something with something different, then that in the Open ID Foundation is not the place to do that because they only work on the Open ID protocol. Um, so this is another way of looking at it: invent, refine, and implement. And another way is really to look at the, the working groups um, in a continuum uh, through a program. And I'm trying to give you these sort of kind of thoughts here. And just as I finish off and uh, pass on. Uh, so once again, just uh, covering off the strong ethics, the community principles, the brand association, the centre of excellence. Um, I sort of kind of uh, wrap those up, I think, in, the last, uh, in my last few slides, so I won't uh, deal with them in any great detail here, except to say you've got to have them present if you're going to actually move some stuff forward, particularly as a, you know, as a, uh, as a non-profit um, and, uh, you know, working with volunteer, uh, largely volunteer labour. I just want to uh, rest a little bit on, uh, on Kantara Europe, still under construction. Uh, effectively, um, it was uh, established in Tarnum uh, in January. Uh, it's, it's effectively, is at the moment, using it. It's, it's going to be, in many respects, look very much like the US. It's going to have a, a mirror of the, uh, of the US website with uh, some things uh, changed um, and personalised. It's, uh, it's basically, it operates um, to use the Kantara uh, trademark and logo type uh, and all the artefacts, it does that through a license agreement uh, with Kantara US. Uh, it's, as I've already said, it's, uh, it's running servers in Frankfurt, uh, and um, it basically in all, all respects, including the membership, uh, is, is fortunately at the moment the, the euro and the US dollar are uh, so close that it just basically makes sense to, to make it the same, the same dollar or euro amount. Uh, we'll be um, announcing a little bit more about that uh, early next year. But one of the one of the thoughts that we wanted to uh, leave you with here, of course, is um, what else should Kantara Europe do? Uh, and you know, it certainly we've been involved within two months of it being formed. We found ourselves as a consortium partner uh, for Project Magpie. We don't know whether we've been successful in that. And an interesting, uh, an interesting twist, uh, we actually find in Kantara members uh, that we have a whole bunch of other folks um, that are actually in, a, in an opposing bid. Uh, so, so it'll be interesting to see uh, um, which, uh, which group uh, wins that, uh, but there's already agreement that there's going to be quite a lot of collaboration because the purpose for this consortium for taking Kantara Europe is because they wanted to use the development platform. Uh, it seems that from the other aspects, uh, from the other bid that we've seen that also makes up Kantara members, uh, was actually in their mind that they were going to use Kantara's platform if they won as well. So uh, whichever way it looks like we were going to be uh, in there, so um, to at least help uh, with the, the doing side. 
Um, I just wanted to briefly kind of, I talked a little bit over those slides about how um, consilia complement overlap. Um, I, this is a, a very broad brush uh, attempt to try and show uh, where the, the overlaps and the gaps are across Fido Cantara, Mobile Ecosystem Forum, uh, Open ID Foundation, and OAX. Uh, and I just want to finish here um, to say, well, nurture, develop and operate, that's what we do.